And on today's show, Claim Early and Claim Late Strategies, part four of this week's series on the strategies to max Social Security benefits with Social Security strategist and expert, Brian Doherty. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician in Innsmouth. Let's get down to business. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you, Steve. I'm telling you, you're educating the savant here. I'm, well, I'm getting a huge upgrade, and I'm now starting to calculate my own in my head. <laughs> uh, I love that. I'm waiting till 70. I love COLA at the rate of 70. Yes. I love the ability that my wife will be able to pick up income from 66 to 70, kind of help me get there and yes. wait. Good reason to, to delay. Yes. There are so many strategies. I, I know that you have a calculator. Right, yes. that you're that you're using. We're gonna. Uh, that's coming out sometime in the next month or so. Yeah, that calculator. It's my understanding that Social Security calculations is like 81 different iterations on that. There can be. Um, actually, some people say there's even more than that. A lot more than oh. that. I, I will the calculator be easy for a consumer to use? Absolutely, Steve. You put in uh, for say a married couple four pieces of information: mm -hmm. dates of birth and your Social Security benefits at their full retirement age. Hit a button. And in probably less than a second, it'll show you the one strategy that'll pay you the most amount of money while you wait for your situation. Well, I, I, I love easy to use um, software and this, and, uh, and I'm really looking forward to see you showing it. Walk me through the basics here when we're looking at claiming early, claim, he claims late. Walk yes. me through that. And there, there's a lot of numbers here and I, and I know that, but this is actually one of my favorite strategies, the claim early, claim late. And here, Steve, you see up top, I got a W for the, for the wife. Her benefit at full retirement age would be $1,125. The husband's would be $1,500. Okay, here's what happens. At age 62, the wife claims her benefit early at mm -hmm. age 62. Because she claimed at 62, it's discounted by 25%. She gets $845 a month. The husband doesn't claim. So for, that, for these few years, they just get the wife's check. You see the annual income starts at 10,000, and because of COLA, we assumed a 3% COLA, it goes up a little bit every year. Now at age 66, the husband claims a benefit, but he claims a spousal benefit. He restricts his benefit to only a spousal benefit, and as a result of that, he's entitled to half of his wife's benefit. Hmm. Now you might be looking at this and say, hey, $633, that's more than half of 951. You're right, because the spousal benefit is 50% of what his wife would have got at her full retirement age, okay? Oh. The 1125. Now this includes uh, adjustments for inflation as well. That's why he gets 633. Now their combined income at age 66 is $19,000. They are earning this amount of money, Steve, at, starting at age 66, and the husband is still delaying the claiming of his own benefit, and it grows by 8% a so year. So this doesn't injure his age 70 benefit. No, it does not. And then what happens at age 70, he switches from the spousal benefit to now what I call his maxed out work history benefit, the biggest it can be, 2508, and now their combined income jumps to $43,000. And over here, Steve, this number is highlighted because during this period of time, $121,844, that is the amount of money they were paid while they waited, while the husband waited to maximize his benefit. I, we're talking about money that we're leaving on the table. Yes. These strategies could put real money for people who really need to wait to maximize this. This is our segue. This is our way to get through it, our transition. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I, like I say, most people don't delay until age 70 because they don't want to mm -hmm. wait this long. They're not waiting that long before they get some income from Social Security. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? You don't have to. While you're, you're waiting, you can receive, in this case, almost $122,000. Well, I want you to explain, because we're kind of talking about how this, this claim early, claim late. Walk me through the 66, and then I want to look at the age, uh, I think uh, the 70, maybe we'll look at that one. Yeah. Well, here, Steve, you have, I, I show claim as early as possible, assuming the husband and wife both claimed at age 62, mm. right? Here's the claim early, claim late. Let's look at what happens at age 66. You see, if they both claimed at 62, their income would be $26,000 at, at, at age 66. Here, the claim early, claim late, their income Excuse, income would be $19,000. Now this is 71% of that starting at age 66. Mm -hmm. But again, keep in mind, the husband has still not claimed his own benefit and it continues to grow by 8% a year. This is huge for people who are really trying to look at to do the right thing and give them some kind of segue, what I would call segue money. Now, this is just stretching it out, starting at 69. 69, just to show you that this is how much money they were paid to wait compared to if they both claimed as early as possible. But you will be able to make up this difference in a very short period of time once you get to age mm. 70. Let's show that next slide. 
because at age 70, look at the difference in income if they both between claim, at, claim early, claim late, and claiming both of them at age 62. Here, they're going to get $43,000 a year as opposed to almost $30,000 a year. And they're going to make up for this difference in a relatively short period of time. I can tell you they would break even at age 76. Well, well this goes back to our original argument a couple days ago in our show Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, when we talked about this issue of human longevity that at the mean average might be 78, but that means 50% the, are on the other side of that set age 78. Yes. And this becomes a huge issue, and especially with this ongoing COLA, I'm getting a bump up, I'm getting a pay raise, basically. Absolutely, and the other thing that's very important, Steve, see here, the husband's monthly income, 2508 compared to 1425, this is also the survivor benefit. Mm -hmm. So when the first spouse dies, the surviving spouse is going to be left with 2508 mm. to survive on as opposed to 1425. We come back from the break. We're going to walk through getting paid to wait, the claim and suspend strategy, which I think, again, here's just another one, another arrow for your quiver. As an advisor, these could be the things that separate you out of the pack and knowing this kind of information. We'll be right back after the break. It's not how much money you make for your clients. It's how much money they get to keep, especially in retirement. But retirement income could cause Social Security benefits to be taxed. One tax advantage alternative is life insurance designed as a non-modified endowment contract that can generate tax-free income without taxing Social Security benefits. These contracts offer differing funding options depending upon your client's risk tolerance. For more information on how life insurance can be part of your retirement planning, just email me at steve at downtobusiness.tv. Brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to the second segment. I'm with Social Security strategist and expert Brian Doherty. Brian, we're talking about this other tactic now called claim and suspend, get paid while you wait. Well, I like to get paid, and I, people think they're giving up money. Now we're giving them a segue position or a transition where they're actually getting income from Social Security and not injuring their maximum age 70 benefit. That, to me, is where this is powerful. Absolutely. And Steve, this claim and suspend strategy, this goes back again to the spousal benefit. And what happens with a spousal benefit, um, the, the other spouse cannot claim a spousal benefit until their, their other spouse has actually claimed their own work history benefit, right? Or their mm -hmm. regular benefit. So if you were gonna uh, delay until age 70, that would mean that your spouse couldn't claim a spousal benefit until age 70 as well. Well, for a lot of people, that's just too mm -hmm. long. They're not gonna do it. Well, here's what Social Security allows you to do. And this is another unbelievable thing. Hmm. Social Security giving you every opportunity to maximize your benefits, and very few people know about this. What they will do, in this case, the husband has the bigger benefit. He's going to get $1,500 a month at his full retirement age. The wife's benefit is going to be $1,125. She has a smaller benefit. The husband, similar to your situation, wants to wait until he's age 70 before so he can maximize his benefit. Mm -hmm. But if he does that, that means his wife normally wouldn't be able to claim a spousal benefit until age 70. But here's what Social Security will allow you to do. At age 66, the husband can claim and suspend. So technically he's claimed his benefit, but he suspends it immediately. And as a result of doing that, it allows his wife to claim a spousal benefit, right? And for him to continue to delay his own benefit, and it continues to grow by 8% a, a year. So his wife starts to get these monthly checks, right, from 66 mm -hmm. to age 70. Here's their income. And then at age 70, what happens is she, she switches from her spousal benefit to her maxed out work history benefit. He switches from his, well, he just turns on his regular benefit, unsuspends it, gets 2508. And now their combined income is $52,000 a year. And it's only going to go up from there with COLA adjustments. The one downside, if there is to this, mm -hmm. is the fact that they only were paid $42,000 while they waited. Still a decent amount mm -hmm. of money, but with a claim early, claim late strategy, they were paid $121,000. The difference being, though, here, their benefits, combined benefits at age 70 are even higher than the claim early, claim late strategy. But if I'm reading you correctly, if I add that extra $42,000, this is what we're talking about, extra yes. money that was not going to be there. Yes. I wanted to wait to age 70. I wanted to max. I'm all there on that. But now I'm looking back to our argument of the timeline. I made mean, if 78 is the average break even, and I just put 42,000 on the table, that break even now has went way down. Yes. How I, far down would you? I mean, I know I, you don't have a calculator, but what would you guess based on something like this? It went from 78 to what? 72 maybe? Or no, actually, I, I've done this. I did it in the book. Um, the break even age would stay around 76. The same as for the claim early, mm -hmm. claim late. And even though it's the same because, because this number is lower than the claim early, claim late, 
This benefit at age 70 is even higher. So again, it makes mm. up for that difference in a relatively short period of time. So Steve, once you get to age 70, <laughs> um, you're in about the best position possible, right, to, to mm -hmm. take full advantage of Social Security and all it has to offer. Now, how do you compare this to our first segment? Which one delivers the most? It depends on what you want to do. Um, if, say if clients are fairly wealthy, have saved some money, they may want to maximize both their benefits at age 70, then they should use the claim and suspend. Mm -hmm. And if this isn't enough money to get them through this bridge from 62 to 70, mm -hmm. well, then they could position some of their assets and in, in other investments mm -hmm. that'll generate income for them to get them through this period of time. Um, people that um, don't have as much in terms of assets and need to be paid the most mm -hmm. amount of money while they wait, usually the claim early, claim late strategy is the better option. Now, if the breadwinner in this case, the one that has a larger one, if they actually are still working in 70, this is gonna be in taxable includable income. Um, yes. So so we may, we may be bumping our income up a little bit, but if we don't do it, it's money that we could have had staying on the table. We need to figure out how to really make our wages and our social security during that transition work together. Yes, yes. Now, I've seen some executives actually defer their comp to get this transition to keep, keep from bracket bumping, pushing their taxable benefits up. But this is just for the average American, because really, when you think about it, Social Security, for a vast majority of Americans, this is their only retirement. This is the, for, for many of them, it is their only retirement. But again, it creates a, an opportunity mm. for financial advisors to show them something like this, determine mm. what do they want to do. Do you want to maximize your Social Security benefits at age 70? Well, this is a strategy. And if this isn't enough money to tide you over to, mm -hmm. to bridge this gap, well, then we need to position some of your assets and other investments that will generate the income to help you to do that. Um, or if you want to look at the strategy that will pay you the most amount of income while you wait, then you look at the claim mm. early, claim late. The, the combined benefits won't be as large as this, but they'll still be much higher than if they both claimed at age 62 and put them in much better mm -hmm. position. Now, these two, these two ideas, the first segment and this segment, this claim and suspend, these are tactics that are rarely used. And most advisors still don't know the mechanics to this. How hard is this to really pick up as an advisor? When they look at it for the first time, they might find it confusing. But again, if they just um, remember that it all revolves around the spousal benefit, their secret weapon, and the strategic timing mm -hmm. of when you turn that on. But Steve, I think the easiest thing to do would be to use my calculator. Just go there, put the four pieces of information in. It'll show you the one strategy that'll pay the most amount of money while you wait. Or it'll also give you an example of the strategy that'll maximize their benefits at age 70 and pay them the most amount of money while they wait to do that. That's coming out here just very soon, and when it comes, we're going to try to use it and see how easy it is. If it's as easy as you say it is, this is a really great opportunity to be able to give a value added to new clients. I'd be evangelizing for new clients on this. To me, this could be a huge prospecting tool. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker-dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? Just hop out to our video archives. And remember, you could be wiser as an educated advisor. I'm Steve Savant, we'll see you tomorrow.